So now let's talk about the alkaline earth metals. They're group two on the periodic table, or 2A, as some periodic tables call it. This family contains two outer electrons, so that last ring would contain two electrons. And they're also a very reactive metal family. And they also do not exist as elements in nature because they are so reactive. So they're always going to be found in compounds. So some uses for alkaline earth metals. Magnesium is white and strontium is red in fireworks. And magnesium is also found in chlorophyll. And calcium is combined with carbonate to make marble. And we use marble for countertops in our kitchen. In this experiment, a piece of coiled magnesium ribbon is ignited in a propane flame. Reacting with the oxygen in the air, it glows and gives off a lot of heat. It is important during this experiment that the experimenters do not look directly at the bright light for too long, as it is bright enough to burn the retinas in the eye. The white residue that remains on the coil after the flame is removed is magnesium oxide. Magnesium is a silvery white hard metal which is difficult to cut. When exposed to air, it readily forms a thin white layer of oxide called lime, so the metal remains silvery for only a few minutes. Once several pieces have been cut, they are dropped into a bowl of water. The calcium metal reacts slowly with the water, forming milky white calcium hydroxide and bubbles of hydrogen gas. After 10 minutes, the water in the bowl becomes cloudy and highly alkaline with dissolved lime. The silvery white metal strontium reacts easily with air, so this sample is protected by a thin layer of paraffin wax and kerosene. When the protective layer is burned off, the flame ignites the metal, which burns in air with an intense crimson light. When the metal burns, it produces a mixture of white strontium oxide and strontium nitride. Volatile strontium salts, such as these, are often used in fireworks and signal flares because they produce a brilliant crimson color. Barium is a metallic element resembling calcium chemically. Here, a piece of barium is placed in a very hot flame. It burns with a very bright blue-green flame and melts easily. Although barium ores are heavy, metallic barium is in fact quite light with a density approximately half that of iron. Radium is represented here by the display of nuclear fireworks inside an instrument called a spintheroscope. A small piece of radium is sealed within the device, and as the radium atoms undergo natural radioactive decay, they release alpha particles. These alpha particles travel at over 20,000 miles per hour, and when they strike a zinc sulfide screen inside the device, Photons of visible light are released in a process called scintillation. This produces the thousands of tiny flashes of greenish light that are visible through the device's magnifying lens. Each flash of light indicates a single atom of radium decaying. Okay, so in conclusion, if something does not exist in elemental form in nature, then how does it exist? Well, the answer is it's a compound. So. Do we remember what a compound is? A compound is just two or more different elements combined. And remember that they're combined on the atomic level. So some examples are NaCl. You have a sodium atom. It combines with a chlorine atom. And it forms sodium chloride or table salt. Another example is your water. And this would be pure water, of course, H2O. But take a look at Cl2, capital C, lowercase l, and a little 2. This is not a compound. It's going to be an element. And remember why? It's because it only has that one capital letter. So in conclusion, one more time, alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals only exist in nature as compounds, not as elements because they're so reactive.